Wolves are animals of noble and communitarian nature, and are the ancestors and relatives of our best friends who have inherited these traits. But unlike dogs, wolves are wild and can be driven by primal instincts of ferocity when in contact with humans, hence our fear and respect for these animals. One thing to note about them is that they would never abandon anyone in their pack, not even for not belonging to the same species. Our story today takes place in Siberia, Russia. It is about Uder Viskovich, a man in his 40s who lives with his wife Olivia in a village located in this frozen region of Russia. Uder is a blacksmith known in the village for being very skilled when it comes to forging tools that are later used for all kinds of activities by the villagers, who are usually his most loyal customers. However, there was something in particular about Uder that made him stand out above his neighbors. This man had been able to tame a wolf, and it was his most faithful pet. Volter, as he had affectionately named his wolf, had been with him since he was a puppy. He had a lot of love and respect for this Russian man, for he was the only one who had dared to adopt him when everyone else was running away from him because of his supposed wild nature. The story of Volter's adoption deserves to be told, for it shows us that there are still humans with a strong appreciation for nature. And while others take it upon themselves to destroy it, they take it upon themselves to provide the best possible life for any being that comes from it. It all started one winter day when Volter, who was just a cub, had lost his pack while trying to attack a bear. Unfortunately, the bear was enough of a match for the four wolves who were defending themselves against him. One by one, Volter's family members fell, and he had no choice but to run. Fortunately, the little wolf ran so fast that he reached a village where humans lived. He thought that some of them might be able to help him, since he was now an orphan and could not take care of himself. The little wolf cleverly placed himself in the town square under a tree that covered him from the falling snow. With his own eyes, he watched everyone pass by as he begged for food. Nobody would go near him. They knew it was a wolf, and there was no shortage of stories in that town about wolves attacking people who wandered beyond the nearby forest. However, one of them did stop when he saw the poor animal going cold and hungry. That man was Uder, who was not afraid to approach him and offer him some food, which Volter gladly accepted. He hadn't eaten in days. And to him, these remnants of Uder's lunch were little more than a delicacy. As the man delighted in watching him eat, he thought that would not be enough. Giving him food would probably keep him alive for another day, but what about the next day? The Russian decided that the best thing he could do for him was to take him with him and give him a home. It was unlikely that his neighbors and his wife would like the idea, but perhaps they might get used to it. After all, in Russia, it's not illegal to keep a pet wolf. In the Baltic country, in order to keep a pet wolf, the owner must comply with a number of adoption regulations, even if it was found in a natural habitat, such as doing training routines to monitor the animal's good health. As is well known, wolves thrive on very dynamic activities, including hunting and running at high speeds. This would not be a problem for Uder. He would take care of all the necessary procedures if it meant that this little orphan would have a chance to live. Years passed, and as time went by, these two formed such a close bond that even the wolf slept next to him on those nights when Olivia had to leave town for work. Olivia had certainly learned to love her husband's pet, but it was clear that she was still wary of him when it came to Volter. Deep down, she still considered him a wild animal that could attack them at any moment. But to this man, Volter had been the son he never had, and often treated him more like a son than a pet, something the wolf could recognize. He would protect this man with his life if necessary. Volter had a very friendly and playful personality, so from time to time, the neighbors in the village would allow their children to play with him. Volter had a lot of fun playing with them. He almost felt like another child. The wolf seemed to understand his foster father's words when he told him to be careful with his teeth and not to bite anyone. Volter loved people, even though many of them didn't stop to help him when he needed it. It didn't matter. The wolf was not aggressive at all. He had never bitten anyone. Or at least, not until then. 
Our story today happens one weekend. Uder was not a very wealthy person, but he had enough money to live well for himself and his wolf. This had to come to the attention of a criminal gang operating in the area. While the town was relatively small, there was no shortage of lowlifes, and to this Russian's bad luck, he would soon be the victim of a crime that could have ended worse had it not been for Volter's help. That Friday night, Uder had come to take Volter for a walk, as he did every night. A few yards from his house was a forest with a large enough plot of land to jog freely. Jogging was an activity that they usually did together and that benefited them both. But that night, the jogging was interrupted when two armed men who had already been watching the Russians' actions for some time took the opportunity now that he was in the middle of nowhere, only accompanied by his wolf. So they intercepted him and aimed a gun straight for the blacksmith's heart, demanding all the belongings he had on him, including his phone and some clothes. Well, they thought that a gun would be enough to frighten Volter, who, seeing the situation his owner found himself in, pounced on one of these men, biting his hand and leaving him badly wounded. While the other tried to get the wolf off his companion, Uder took the opportunity to try to snatch the weapon. Unfortunately, the attempt was a failure, and the gun went off, leaving Uder with a badly injured leg. While the two men were fleeing, if they had stayed a moment longer, the wolf would have finished them off. It was not long before Volter chased them and tried to finish the job. But seeing his owner lying on the ground bleeding and almost unable to move, he decided that the best thing to do was to try to help him. At first, the faithful wolf tried to lick his owner's wound in an unconscious attempt to help him relieve his pain, but it clearly wasn't enough. For his part, Uter could not stop thinking about the pain he felt and believe that this would be the end of his life. His leg hurt so much. If he kept losing blood, he was going to die, and there was nothing more he could do. He couldn't use his phone to call for help, and he couldn't scream either. It would do no good, as no one would hear him. The man had no choice but to accept his end. And if that was his end, well, at least he was glad to be by his wolf's side. And at that moment, he remembered all the beautiful moments he had lived together with him. While Uter was absorbed in his thoughts, Volter knew he had to act. He wasn't about to abandon one of his pack. So he grabbed the hood of his owner's coat between his teeth, and with all his might, began to drag him to the only place where he knew he could be safe, his home. Fortunately, the snow made the job of dragging him easier. When Uter realized what his wolf was doing, he couldn't stop crying. The animal was paying him back in spades for the help the man had given him when he was just a puppy. Finally, the wolf, making a superhuman effort, was able to take him home, where Olivia was. And she did not take long to call emergency services to save her husband. Fortunately, the story ended well for this family. Uder made it to the hospital in time and was able to recover, all thanks to the help of his wolf. When the village heard the news, some people couldn't stop crying because they were so moved. They would never see this wolf again with eyes other than of solidarity. That was today's video, and now it's your turn to answer these questions and participate in the debate. What do you think about Uter adopting this wolf? Would you do the same? Did you like Volter's heroic deed? Do you think it's safe for countries to allow wolves as pets, as is the case with Uter and Voltaire? Leave your opinion on these questions in the comments. You can also take that opportunity and leave us your like to let us know that you're liking our content and to make sure that we can continue making more videos of this type. See you next time.